talk to you about propagation. And some of you might be thinking, what the heck is propagation? So according to the dictionary, propagate means to breed specimens of a plant or animal by natural processes from the parent stock. So again, you might be thinking, what the heck? So basically guys, it means this is how you get free plants. <laughs> <laughs> love free plants so th yes this is how you get free plants to broaden your collection or give to people as gifts so it's just it's an awesome way to get new plants and honestly I've been doing this for a number of years and the plants that I have most often propagated are my golden pothos and actually that's what I have on a pole behind me here but I'm not going to propagate golden pothos today. I do have a lot of cuttings that are rooting out, but I'm not quite ready to do a repotting of those cuttings into a new plant yet. So I'll, we'll do that some other time. But today what I want to do is my spider plants. So I have two kinds of spider plants. I have um, a completely green variety and I have a variegated variety. And I've had these plants for so long that like I don't know when I first started doing spider plants, I wasn't interested in like what's the correct names for them or species or anything like that. So I have no idea. So I just call them green spider plants and variegated spider plants. So I'll show you the mother plant that I'm propagating from in a minute. Um, but there are two ways that you can propagate cuttings and that is um, by water or by direct soil method. Um, I have tried both and in my opinion, rooting cuttings in water is far more productive and successful for me. Uh, I have tried to uh, do direct uh, soil propagation where you just take the cutting off the mother plant and you plop it right into the soil and hope for the best. I've had like really limited success with that. Like I've had a lot I've had like kind of like a 50-50 success rate on soil propagation, whereas with water propagation, I've had, I'd say like 99% success rate. Um, because my feeling is when you put it into the water and they grow the root system, I can see that root system. I can see if it's thriving or if it's withering and dying. So I can immediately, not immediately, but you know, before planting, I can know that's not a viable cutting or this is like a good, healthy cutting. So that's why I prefer to do the water method. So all of my propagating, I take the cuttings, I put them into water, and over the summer, I don't know if you've noticed out on my porch on my coffee table, I have beautiful little glass um, vases filled with cuttings, and it's pretty too. It's like, a, it's like a decorator piece as well. So it's pretty, and I can watch my cuttings to make sure that they're rooting out well, and I can tell when they're ready to be rooted. So uh, right now the things that I'm propagating are golden pothos, uh, my green spider plant, my variegated spider plant, purple passion, and the newest thing that I've started to try to propagate is my, um, my fiddle leaf fig. So that's a brand new adventure into propagating and so far so good. Those take a really long time um, to see any roots uh, blossom off of those. So I'm seeing little white nodes coming off of that cutting. So fingers crossed that I'm going to have a fiddle leaf fig to pot up at some point. So I will definitely film that for you. But today it's all about spider plants. So I want to do um, uh, a couple different pots for myself and I want to do a small pot for um, my son's girlfriend. So anyway, I want to take you out on the porch, show you the mother plant, and then I'll show you the propagations and their roots and what I do to pot them up. So let's go. The first two plants that I'm going to pot up are propagations from this spider plant, which I have hanging out on my front porch for the summer. And I actually have both varieties potted up in the same pot. If you can see here, the variegated has the white margins on the leaf and the regular solid green. So how this grows is it will shoot out these shoots that get this little white flowers on it and then it starts to grow to little, little baby spiders. And then here's one that's a little bit more mature and then they eventually grow into these spiders. Now, these are root balls. 
And how this works in the wild, in nature, is that the plant will put these out, they will reach down to the soil, and these little root balls will root right into the soil, they become a new plant, and they keep going. So what we do is we remove it from the stem, and this is the piece that we propagate. You stick it in, you stick this root ball into the water and you get amazing roots. And I'm going to show you that next. I really like to use glass containers because I love to see the roots developing. So this container is full of little spiders that have come off, oh, a few weeks ago. So let me just pull this out. I'm going to pull all of these out. Oh gosh, they're so thick. I hardly get them out. Well, maybe I'll take one and show you. Now they started actually to root together too, which, oh my gosh, I didn't really think that through because I should have separated. I have a variety of variegated and, and green in there. But anyway, you can see how crazy these roots are. So these are a few weeks. These are a couple of months. So these have crazy roots. So these are obviously going to root in and do very, very well here. Let me pull this one out. This actually is going to be an easy one to pull out, I think. All right. Look at those roots. That's so crazy cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these into two groups, my variegated and my solid, and then I'll see what size pots I need for these guys. I pulled out a couple of different pots um, from my potting shed. So this is one that's got an attached saucer and it does have a drainage hole down in there. Uh, so this will drain. Uh, this one with a fleur de lis on it, this is one without any drainage. So this basically is just a cover pot. And so that's why I just got this regular black grow pot that I had left over from some plants that I bought at the nursery. I keep some size, some of every size pot. So I always have for projects. So that nestles down right and nice in there, but it's got the drainage holes and then it can kind of sit in this cover pot and I can just check it and make sure that it's not sitting in too much water um, and uh, watch the monitor, monitor the water that way. This one is a new kind of a pot that I have just started using and these are self-watering pots. So these have the insert here. This white is the insert and this is a cover pot. And down here you'll see it's got a little window and you can see if there's water down there. And so it works the same as this. It drains down through here and it keeps water in the reservoir and it just will self water, okay? So I have the three different kinds. So I'm going to separate out my spiders and decide which size pots I wanna use for what and kind of go from there. And then this morning when I was sitting out on my porch, I noticed that some of these spiders were looking a little scraggly, so I clipped them off and I'm going to put these into the water and start propagating these guys for the next round. So, and that's, that's what I do is if I see spiders on there that are looking a little poorly or a lot of times after windstorms and stuff, spiders will blow off and I'll find them like on the porch floor or down in the garden and I'll just pick them up and stick them into the water and let them start to propagate. So I'm gonna change camera angles here so that you can see what I'm doing and I'm gonna pot these guys up. All right, so I'm gonna start first of all by separating these guys into piles, the regular versus the variegated. I probably should have changed that water out a little sooner. It's little green <laughs> and I will take off any little pieces of like you know foliage that looks like yellow or what have you or brown
jars out of the way. As you can see, we have a lot of propagation. This is gonna be one healthy, big, robust plant. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do is get my gloves on. And I'm actually gonna save some of these out because I have someone that I'm going to give uh, a small hanging plant to. And so I'm going to save out several of these to make a nice little, I think that'll be a nice little hanging planter for her. So I'm gonna save those out, but still look at all these I have for a nice robust plant. So now the next decision is what pot for what? So I think I want to do, let's see here, what's gonna look nicer? The variegated plants in this, or this, or this. I think I don't like it in this one. So I think it's gonna be this one or this one. I think I'm gonna go with this one because I kinda of like how simple the pot is for the variegated foliage. So I think I'm gonna do those in there. And I think I'm gonna do these guys in here or in here. I kinda of like these in here. So I'm gonna save this pot for something else. So I'll put that aside. All right, so let's do this one first. I like to use organic potting mix and this is miracle Grow Performance Organics. So I like to use organic as much as possible. Not that we're gonna eat these or anything, but just, I don't know, I like to use organic things if at all possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my little trowel here and I'm gonna fill the pot up about halfway with the organic soil. And then I'll place my cuttings in there and then I'm gonna fill around them. going to use this water that I had in their propagation pots and it helps the soil to settle down because it's all very fluffy when you first pot it up and so you want to make sure that your soil is down below the lip of the pot so that when you water it the water doesn't like gush out over the rim. So I'm gonna let that set for a little bit and it's gonna need to be watered in a little bit more later, but I think that looks cute. So plant number one, 
done. All right, plant number two. This is gonna be a little bit different because I already have soil in here. So I'm actually gonna remove a little bit of this soil. I actually had some propagations in here and I took them to my office and they didn't do so hot. Um, they were um, my Purple Passion propagations. And I'm not sure whether the situation at my office isn't ideal or what like so anyway I have some more purple passion propagations that I am letting root up a lot more so that they have a lot more substantial root system before I pot them so I'm not gonna pot those today I'm just gonna do these spider plants Oh, I like how this is gonna look. That is my variegated spider all ready to go. And I do think it's gonna do really well in this pot in particular because I have another large one in my dining room that I propagated and put together for my father-in-law. And uh, it's in a larger version of this, um, of this uh, pot here. And it's just doing so good because spider plants do like to be pretty moist you know they they really like a lot of water so I like to have them in a self-watering pot so they don't dry out because what happens is you'll get these like little leaf these little brown tips on the leaves which you can just snap off you just pull those off because it does bother me I <laughs> hate to have brown tips on my plants so I just nip those off and actually this leaf, this whole leaf doesn't look so hot. I'm gonna pull that. But yeah, anything I see that's got a brown tip, I'll usually just pinch it off so it doesn't look like it's dying. But it's very common. You'll see that a lot of times people's spider plants have brown tips, but I think it's because they're just not getting enough water. Um, it's been my experience anyway, because I'm finding that that plant that spider plant in the other pot is doing just phenomenal and like pff, almost no brown tips. So anyway, that looks good. I'm very happy with that. I'm happy to get these guys finally into pots. Um, they've been sitting, I had the little propagation jars out on my, as a decoration, um, and so I could keep an eye on them out on the coffee table on my front porch. And I've been watching them and thinking, oh my word, I really need to get those guys potted up because they are getting like enormous roots. So I will not have any of these dying off, I am sure. I feel I will have a 100% success rate with these guys um, survival because they had such a hardy root system. I went and I grabbed the pot that I want to use for these little guys because this is such a cute hanging pot and I actually picked this up this is a golden not golden pothos this is a neon pothos and I had been wanting one of these and I happened to come across this cute little one at Lowe's so I picked it up and it has this um, hanging planter but honestly I'm not going to use it as a hanging planter so that's why I decided to pot these guys up into this hanging planter um, as a gift for uh, my son's girlfriend, Britt. So I'm gonna take this guy out and I'm actually going to use uh, this planter for this. This is gonna be awesome. I love this color in this pot. So this worked out just fantastic. So I'm gonna do that second. But first of all, I'm gonna get these little 
spiders planted up. Drop my glove. All righty. So I'm just gonna again get some soil down into this little cup about halfway. And this is gonna be pretty a pretty full little plant. Tamp that down in a little bit. Grab my propagations, get them tucked down in there, and then just back fill in with the soil. And usually you can keep things in their pots for a year or two or whatever. Um, sometimes you don't ever want to take them out of their pots if you're happy with the size they are and you don't want to have any bigger of a plant, then you can just leave them in there and, you know, just kind of make sure that you fertilize it because if you don't put new soil in, it just takes all of the nutrients out of the soil and it'll start to suffer because it doesn't have the nutrients it needs. But you could keep it in their same pots for a while. So I'm just tamping this all down around. I think that's pretty good. I'm gonna water this a little bit. Let that settle in a little bit. So I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna move on to this neon pothos. Oh my gosh, I love this plant so much. I was really, really obsessed with this. I had never even known about this plant, uh, but I was watching, gosh, I don't remember, might have been Plantarina, uh, which is a great YouTube channel. If you guys are interested in house plants, she's amazing. She's very quirky, very funny, um, but she really is so, so fascinating and has so much knowledge. And she has a website, you can buy plants off her website. And I was actually about ready to pull the trigger and buy a large one of these neon pothos off of her website. But um, I just, I couldn't do it and I don't know why. And wouldn't you know, I went to Lowe's and I found this one. Now this one is tiny compared to the one I was going to buy. And it hers, you can buy them with beautiful different cover pots you can choose from. Um, so it's in no way a, uh, you know, a direct comparison, but I paid only $17 for this little neon pothos, um, as opposed to a lot more on her site. But, you know, I don't mind paying, um, for different plants that I can't find readily. I don't mind paying. Um, but it just so happened that that's, I guess, the reason why I couldn't bring myself to do it is I think that the good Lord had in mind that I would get it for $17 at Lowe's. <laughs> so anyway, I ended up with this beautiful, beautiful plant, which I'm so excited to see this grow. And then once it starts to take off, and this is gonna grow really long tendrils. If you guys are not familiar with pothos, they grow really long tendrils and you can like tendril them around the room if that's the kind of look you like. But if you like a more compact look like this, you can trim them back and all of those trimmings become propagations. So it's whatever you like to do, uh, whatever aesthetic that you have for your home or your office or your place of work. Um, but I, I do like them kind of long, but my, my rule of thumb is like, I don't trail them around the room or anything but I will trail them across a piece of furniture. Like I have a one beautiful one um, and I'll show you at some point um, in my dining room. It's absolutely gorgeous and it's long and I have it trailing around the top of the, along the top of the china closet in my dining room and it's gorgeous. But the rule is once those tendrils hit the ground, I trim them off and that's why I always have I always have propagations going of golden pothos and uh, I have tons of those plants all over my house and at my office 
I give them away to people. <laughs> so if you are interested in a golden pothos, hit me up. I will absolutely give you one of those bad boys for free. <laughs> but they are a beautiful plant. They are really a beautiful plant. And uh, it's funny, you know, now that the seasons have started to change, all through spring and summer, I don't give a thought to, you know, house plants. I mean, I maintain and care for them, obviously, because I love them. But like, I don't think about, oh, what new kind of house plants can I get? But I think it's just like one of those things that as the seasons shift, your interests kind of shift as well. And that's what's happening to me is I'm getting very excited about my house plants again. And again, not that I don't, not that I'm not excited about them always, but you know, I just like get a renewed vigor in thinking about, oh, what kind of new house plants could I add to my collection? And where can I move them around? And same as in, in the garden, where would they do better? Where could I put them that they were gonna thrive and do better? And do I wanna change them up a little bit? Like for example, instead of having last year, I had decided that I would, um, instead of having one of my pothos be just a, tra a trailing one, a vining one, that I would um, put it onto a pole and have it grow up a pole. So that turned out to be a great experiment and that is doing fantastic. So I'll show you that too uh, when I do a, I'll do a house plant tour once the weather turns and we're firmly inside, I will do a house plant tour and we'll talk more about that. But oh my gosh, look at how gorgeous that looks. <gasps> I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. Ugh. All right, I wanna get this spider put into its hanger. And I'll show you that. And you just kinda, let me move this out of the way. So kinda see how that looks. Doesn't that look fun? I think she's gonna enjoy that. That is super cute. All right, so I brought all of my newly potted plants out here onto the porch so that I can enjoy them over the course of the next month before I have to bring them in the house. But in the meantime, they can root in and they can enjoy all this great indirect sunlight and fresh air. So I can't wait to give this one to Britt. I'm sure she'll enjoy it as much as I enjoy mine. But I hope that this inspired you to maybe think about doing some propagation of your own. And uh, if it does, let me know down in the comments what you like to propagate. All right, guys, have a great rest of your day. See you soon.